Welcome back to the Eye Doctor podcast number 16. And you might be thinking, why the hell am I laid down like this? And the answer is because I'm absolutely sick to the back teeth of people just ringing me up and messing me about. So we're going to do a little story time to start off today. So I thought we'll just relax, sit down and breathe. So I was working away as you do and the phone rings a lot here. A lot of people have a lot of inquiries and obviously we don't always know what somebody's going to call about. So we do get some interesting conversations on the phone. We get some very vague questions as well. Often we'll get, how much is it to fix my phone? And I'm like, what's wrong with it and what phone is it? Just really, I can't even think of anything off the top of my head, but really, really random stuff, really random stuff. We get lots of inquiries and that's, that's how it goes. We've been really busy the last few weeks because of all the, all the social media that's been getting out there, which has been great. But this particular situation happened, I think, yesterday or the day before, and somebody called me up. I'm not going to try and do an accent. Don't, don't, I'm not, because it'll just turn French or something. He rang me up and he said, how much is it? I've dropped my phone in water. How much will it cost to fix it? And I said, what does it do or not do? He just, it, just ignorant. And I don't know, it just, it got dropped in water and it's got wet. So I said, all right, what phone is it? 15 Pro, it had been water damaged. And normally I wouldn't like charge really to have a look at something. But realistically, if I get the feeling that they're just going to mess around or they're just wasting my time, then I'll say, look, we've got a £15 diagnostic fee. And we, we, we use that feature on, on the website mainly for when people are unsure exactly what's wrong with their phone. And it's more of a commitment thing than a fee to actually diagnose something. I know a lot of people have bench fees and that kind of thing, but we generally do diagnostics for free. The £15 more so that not everybody will book it. There's, there's like a commitment on their part, sort of a deposit. We knock it off any fees that they have anyway. And if they choose not to go ahead with it, it's a little bit of something to, for, for my time. Anyway, I said, look, it'll be £15 if I, have to, if I have to open it up. So bear in mind, after opening up an iPhone 15 Pro, 15 quid, having a look and spending maybe 20 minutes, half an hour trying to figure out what's wrong with it. I think that's pretty good value for money. Coops, I know you're probably watching this and thinking, what the fuck, I bought them a fly swatter, but I don't know where I've put it down. Let me go and find it. <laughs> right, now that that situation sorted, just uh, thanks again, Coops, for the uh, fly swatter. It really helped there. <laughs> I can't remember where I was at to story time, but something, something, you got him then. <laughs> I said, it's 15 quid, which, like I say, is a pretty, 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 pretty pretty fair price to spend a little bit of time opening up a phone and you know when you just get the feeling that they're going to mess you about and he goes a bit expensive that isn't it mate and I'm like I don't think it is I think it's fair and he goes everywhere else says they'll do it for a fiver and I'm like well, why are you even wasting my time speaking like a five take it there and I, I, that's what I said to him and I try and keep me cool on phone because the, like I said at the start sometimes these things what do frustrate you when people call you and I am grateful to everybody who makes inquiries, but you know, sometimes it just really gets to you. And yeah, I said, well, take it somewhere else. And he goes, well, I just wanted to support a local business, you know what I mean? And I'm like, well, all right, bring it down, but it's going to be £15. And then it carries on a little bit and carries on. And he said, will you do it for £13? I'm not paying 13 quid. Uh, mate, it's not negotiable at this point. And uh, I said, it's £15. And I said, look, I really don't like the situation what we're in. I suggest you take it somewhere else because I don't want your business at this point. He goes, well, I'll leave you a bad review then. For God's sake. Oh. So I said, okay, that's fine, whatever. And I'm just thinking I need to get off the phone at this point. He's still there talking, chelp, 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 blah, blah, blah. And uh, he goes, I'll tell you what, I'll bring it tomorrow and I'll pay you £13. I said, no, you just threatened me with the one star review. It's just not going to happen, is it? Don't do it. And I, I kept cool and I kept polite and I'm just like, listen, pal, have a nice day, see you later. So th I thought that with that, didn't hear anything for five minutes and then all of a sudden, anonymous phone calls, prank phone calls, and that went on for about an hour after that and I was just like, oh, fucking hell. So yeah, that's my story time and I wanna know what nightmare customers or nightmare situations have you got yourselves into um, if you've got a repair business yourself. Second order of business is, we've grown, we've like doubled almost overnight. Like, since last week, I don't know what we were on. I think we'd hit 25k last week, and we were absolutely buzzing. Like, this last week, we're at 50k now. So, oh yeah, so this is Thursday. We might have tripled by bloody Sunday when this is released. So, it's insane. I can't, I can't get over how, how fast the YouTube channel's grown. 
and I'm grateful to every single one of the people who've subscribed, especially the ones who stick around and watch me talk crap for 20 minutes or however long we do this podcast for. I know it varies week by week, depending on how much I've got to say. Um, but yeah, thank you. Welcome. I hope you enjoy the Ollie show. <laughs> Third order of business. I meant to speak about this last week, but I got a bit sidetracked and ended up talking about other things was that Samsung, not Samsung, I fix it have recently announced that they will no longer be partnering with Samsung to provide their service pack parts due to the rising costs and the not not working together they i think the the real reason why they've stopped doing it is because like if you look at the s23 series you can no longer get the service pack part with the chassis which it used to be pretty good that you could do that but now they've made it so that you've got to keep the original chassis or replace it with a separate part and use the rework kits to sit it back together it's not a bad repair to do i dare say that there's a video going live either it's just gone live or it goes live next week where, where I do the actual repair. It's, it's not bad, but it could definitely be better. Let's answer the phone. Just a little reminder that I've got lots of Samsung repair tutorials on the, on the YouTube channel here. So if you're searching for something, always choose mine. And I will usually put a link in the description on where you can buy a genuine part. I mean, iFixit have always been expensive. I've never bought a Samsung part from iFixit because they're always pricey. I, I imagine that that plays a part in it. We use um, a distributor in the UK, mainly a company called Headlane. Um, and they always have very good stock levels of most Samsung parts. And they always seem to be the most reasonably priced. I think it is trade only, so you need an account with them. But if you're in the biz, then you, you shouldn't have any issue uh, setting up an account with them. And they're very, they're very good. Next day delivery, always available. And they've got quite a late cut-off point as well. I believe you can order at half past five and still receive your parts the following day, which is super useful, especially if you're open until five o'clock and you've got someone who walks in at 10 to and asks for a S22 Ultra screen, you can get it in next day and get your money in only thing is just take a note that the prices are ex VAT on their website so make sure that you're not doing yourself out and yeah like I say I recommend them other thing about them is you get the um, not just the screens there's a lot of suppliers out there where, where you can buy the service pack screen but they never have the genuine adhesives the service pack adhesives they might not have genuine batteries or genuine charging ports so just just keep an eye out for that like I say if you're in the UK or I think Europe as well because they've got a, a Dutch warehouse so I imagine they can ship w Europe wide I know being out of the EU UK struggles to ship inside of Europe now but they've definitely got a EU warehouse so Europe and UK headline are brilliant for that and I'm not being paid to say that they are genuinely good I, I, I don't think I've ever really had an issue with them uh, where I've even had to speak to somebody anyway waffling on a little bit the other th thing that I wanted to talk about very very quickly was a couple of people have asked uh, what sort of booking system we use and what till system we use and I've had people sliding in the DMs asking that and I think I've been fairly responsive the booking system that I use I, I always use Google Sheets to, to sort of as an intake form and it's very very basic and very simple and all you, all you do it, it we just choose drop off or mail in repair take a few customer details the repair make a model color and then it has a it has a repair status so i i use chat gpt to help me sort of identify those repair statuses and then color code them as well so that everybody in the shop knows where where we're at with something if we if it's a mail in it has the order number associated with it because we've had trouble before there's this four sometimes five of us in here across various days and it it gets very complicated if somebody phones up and i'm not here then it's usually another phone call what's the status of this repair so this just keeps it organized we've tried using um other pos software before such as i can't even remember what it's called now repair tracker or something like that uh there's a, the main one the big company i can't remember what they're called anyway we've used them before and we just find that they're really feature rich and there's too much going on it takes a long time to set up so the google sheets for our small business works perfectly as well as our till system which i'm going to talk about now so we're using epos now which i was getting spammed and spammed and spammed for ads after i'd used zettle for a long time and we, all we do is just set up a custom price or a misc item on zettle we never set up so that we were every repair was on there 
Now, with EPOS now, it's, it's like an all-in-one system. It's not just the card reader like Zettel was. I think it was 250 up front. We pay about £20 a month, and then we're 1% on card fees. So comparing that to Zettel, we were paying 1.75% and no monthly fee or anything like that. This is where it gets good. That includes the actual POS system, the card reader, which looks miles better than the Zettel one and much easier to use. It's got a thermal printer with that so you can print off paper receipts for customers. It just makes you look a lot more professional. And then you get a barcode scanner as well. I think it was meant to be a USB barcode scanner, but that was out of stock, so we got the wireless one. It's just a complete system what helps you get set up cash draw as well if you take cash that can be useful just to keep things organized and safe it's a brilliant system it works really really well creme de la bloody creme of the thing is alongside it working really well you can earn your 250 quid back by just telling one friend about it right every time that you refer somebody to the system make sure that they use the link and they will send you 250 pounds in cash so it comes on a prepaid debit card type thing and you can just use it for whatever you want. You can spend it anywhere, 250 quid. I didn't even know about this referral thing. Obviously, that's why I'm talking about it now. I'm not paid by EPOS now to do it. Although, for transparency, they did send me a message yesterday asking if we can do an interview for like um, their blog or something like that uh, and, and be used in their advertising, which is really exciting that people like that have picked up on it. But the referral thing, completely separate to that, just use the link in the description below and I'll get paid for it and you will get a really, really good system that I truly believe will help in your repairs. The only downside, this is the only downside is that it doesn't have a booking specific thing on there. You can hold orders so you can take a repair in, print off a receipt for the customer to say that we've got it and it can go on hold on the system. It works okay. You can take the customer name and details. It works okay, but we found that the Google Sheets works better because it's on every PC in the in the shop. So EPOS now, check the link in the description below, give them a call. They're not too pushy on the sales on the phone. They will try and sell you something. That's what they're paid to do. And they're on decent commissions, I imagine. So rough with the smooth with that, but I would recommend it anyway. So even if they're trying to sell you something, just use it, it's great. I'm finishing this podcast now because I've got way too much work to get on with. Have a great day, everybody, and see you in the next episode. Thanks again for subscribing.